be livid. And what I'm doing is I've got this commission from Mark 12. It's not often the place we look, is it, when we're <laughs> thinking about commissions. But you shall love the Lord your God. How? With all your heart. With, with if you like, with all your emotions, the very seat of your emotions, the, the very depth of your being with all your soul, with, with all your spiritual energy that you have, with, with all your mind. There are so many people who think that somehow Christians, they leave their brain at the, on the pavement when they come into church. But actually, with all of our intellect, with all our working out, and with all of our strength, you know, um, it, it's physically costly being a disciple. You've just been talking about the charities that you support and that you're involved with. And, and just think about that. Actually, when you get back from being involved, you're tired, aren't you? I sometimes go and cook for a local charity. Uh, yeah, I cook uh, for a local charity. Um, lunches for MHA communities and... Uh, <laughs> they, they're all surviving. They're all doing well, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, when I come back, I'm shattered, right? Uh, and there are all kinds of ways in which we volunteer and we support others. But in terms of how we are as Christians, it's all of our heart, all that we have, all of our soul, all our spiritual energy, all of our intellect and our thinking. John Wesley, time and time again, was urging the people called Methodists to work out your salvation. It, it didn't mean you've got to um, you've got to work your salvation up by yourself. No, no. He knows that Jesus died for us, and therefore we can appropriate that salvation that God has through Christ is given to us. But that being said. We have to work it out in our lives. We do that with our intellect and with our thinking, and of course, with all our strength. And then Matthew, but sorry, Jesus goes on to say in Mark, and the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now we think of these as the great commandment, but actually they're also a commission for us. Uh, that we should, and the way in which we should be doing our discipleship, if we're really going to be rooted in that discipleship, then we have to take all of this into, uh, into account. Now, I'm going to show you uh, a video because uh, that being said, uh, it's okay on the Sunday, we're all together, but what happens at other times? Let's just go and have a look at this video. It feels like we're too few to make a difference. But the reality is, Monday to Saturday, God has us. Scattered in the world, connecting to hundreds and thousands of people. So wherever you are. Whoever you are. Whatever you do, you can make all the difference in the world. And on Sundays, when we gather together, we strengthen and empower one another to be sent out again for life on our front lines. That's really interesting, isn't it? Actually, of course, we spend most of our lives away from church and away from each other. But wherever we are, in our, with our family and our leisure pursuits, in, in work, uh, we are uh, amongst other people. And we can have that uh, really crucial uh, affecting of other people's lives because of the way that we live it. If discipleship means anything, it means 
a huge amount Monday through Friday, Saturday, as well as Sunday. I want you to think for a moment. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to go in a group, uh, but I want you to think for a moment. Who are the people that you are connected to? Where do you meet them? And in what way do you influence them? Who are the people you are connected to? Where do you meet them? And what are the ways in which you influence them? Whether you do it just at this moment or later, I'm going to invite you to jot down some names, actually, uh, because you can pray for them as well. Uh, and we, we'll think about a way of doing that in a moment. Uh, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint because our mission, I think, covers a number of areas. It, it, we have our calling, but this is the way that I shape it or the way I speak about it. I think our mission is about sharing our faith. Now, the fundamental thing about that is that we live it. You know, many years ago, uh, when I was candidating for ministry, which was a very long time ago, uh, I worked in an engineering factory in Huddersfield, and I was trying to bear a witness. Uh, the most difficult thing that I had to contend with were not people who were against the Christian faith, but a, a particular Christian who was really the most difficult person in the factory, who was always fiddling his bonus. And that, that was the most difficult thing in terms of witnessing to my faith there. But uh, we need to live it out so that it makes sense. Uh, and sharing the first yet faith, yes, verbally, needs to be visible but it also needs to be audible. Um, and sharing the faith, I think serving the community is really important. Now, we'll think in a moment about the ways in which we do this corporately. And you've talked already about the uh, charities that you're involved in. That's really key, it seems to me, in terms of the Christian influence in our society, like a kind of leaven uh, in the whole. I believe firmly, it's really interesting, the older I get, uh, the more strongly I believe that the, there is a Christian uh, impetus to speak out about injustices uh, and to struggle for justice is a key element, I think, of that Christian witness of living it. Um, it comes out in all, all kinds of ways about challenging people um, when they say things that are really uh, not right. Uh, writing to your MP, being in touch with people, standing with others uh, in this way, but also caring for creation. Um, in his introduction, Tony referred to uh, the what the Methodist Church had uh, called Sharing in God's Mission. That was a really interesting program um, in the 80s and 90s. And that included all of these. And I guess that's the rootedness for me uh, in this, that caring for creation. And of course, today we've had, um, you know, a statement by the government about what they're going to do. Uh, and all the green parties saying, well, <laughs> so what? This is not enough. And, and there needs to be a Christian voice in all of this about our care for creation. Yeah. When we think about, you say, well, our influence is only small. Um, only 6% of us go to worship in, in, the, in the country. And, uh, and we found that the recent census survey for 2021 says that less than 50 percent of the population would tick the box to say that they're christian 
But that's not a reduction of the people who go to church, actually. That's a reduction of nominal Christianity. Um, and, and, and the fact that people are owning up and saying, I don't believe, frankly, I think it's a good thing. Uh, uh, it might be more awkward when we're talking about public policy, but it, it's a good thing because people have a reality about where they're at and therefore mission uh, and evangelism, I think, is much easier. So what sort of influence can we have? There's only me. It's, uh, it's so, I'm only small. I'm insignificant. I can't really do much. Well, just watch this, because there are things that each of us can do, and this highlights it. Here we go. Ten hours a day. Six days a week. Whenever I'm needed. Every Saturday morning. I spend my time. In a place that matters to God. With people that matter to God. My front line. In the stresses. Successes. Problem solving. Tantrum resolving. <laughs> Laughter. Teamwork. Jokes. Tears. Boredom. Tension. Cups of coffee. Cans of coke. God is working with me. He helps me see what he sees. Put here by God. He knows the day ahead. This place is rich with possibilities. This is my front line. quite interesting the way that, that just indicates that although we're just one person we can have a profound effect uh, on the people I know I know a primary school teacher and throughout her career she's affected the life of the school not just her class not just her colleagues but in some cases the life of her school and I, I think that that's such an interesting parable about the way that we too can influence other people. I guess it's about grace. Uh, but I want you to think too, uh, in small groups now, about where are, where are the people that you can influence? You know, what categories are they? I don't suppose you need to share individual names, but uh, what are you involved in, in the way that you can share your faith and live it out in these kind of ways. Okay, thank you, Tony. So welcome back. I hope you found that a useful discussion. You had time for it. Um, I think one of the interesting things is, is that actually we're surrounded by people. You know, our neighbours uh, in the little row where we live. Where I live in a little Victorian terrace house and. Uh, uh, and uh, where the people where we live, the people we work with, uh, the people in leisure pursuits and so forth. And I have a diagram and you might like to use this um, uh, uh, to try and identify the people that you really feel that God is laying on your heart for, to, for you actually to share something of your faith. So I do it like this. It's very simple. The, 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 the pin drawing is, I guess, me, right? Uh, and I put um, family and friends and work and leisure pursuits. Um, and, and, but, but they need to be your circles. And uh, write a name or two in each of these or, or put their names into a prayer bowl. It's a simple little bowl where you have the names of people that you want to pray for regularly. And, and 
think about them and think about the ways in which you can share something of your faith. You know, I know uh, because Tony's just been telling me that you've got postcards inviting people to the Easter services. Yeah. Yeah. At, at the central hall. And uh, if if you've got one of those, don't put it on the fridge with a fridge magnet. Give it to somebody. Uh, share it with somebody and invite them. That'll be great. So if we're going to live it, uh, that means that we are part of the sent people of God. I mean, Jesus, Jesus was calling his disciples, but he was calling them to follow me. And uh, at the end of his life, time and time again, he's saying, you're going to go on. You're going to do greater things than I have done. You, I, I will be with you. Uh, I will empower you. The, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the counselor, he will come and he will be with you and uh, enable you. All of those things. So we are part of a sent people. Um, you know, churches, churches kind of coalesce as though somehow God has sent us here for this time. And we've got to stay here like this. No, friends, we're always in a dynamic process if we're going to be missional. Now, at the other end of, of Westminster, there's another famous church. I mean, as well as uh, the Central Hall Westminster. Uh, and that famous church, of course, is St. Martin in the Fields. And uh, there's another famous preacher there. Uh, just like the ones you've got, but and that's Sam Wells, and he writes about mission in a really interesting way, it, because there are some things we need to do for people, and there are many things that we need to do with people, and he speaks about the ways in which we can be working for people. So, you know, in terms of the homeless centre, that you support, um, there's a sense in which there are some things we have to do for people to kind of fix the problem. Uh, and there are some times we have to being for people. We have to advocate for people. People are, um, they feel as though they can't speak. They don't have a voice. They can't uh, articulate what it is that is really uh, important to them. Uh, or the injustice that has been meted out against them, or the issues that are surrounding them. And therefore they need people who will be there being for them. But for most people, it's about working with them. So being alongside people, understanding people, being empathetic, listening to people, uh, in terms of fundamental mission, listening is just as important and maybe more important than speaking. Listening and understanding. And then we are able to work with people and with the issues that they are facing or the doubts that they have about the Christian faith or that the, the issues they've got about church, you know, there are many people who feel badly about the church because in their childhood or at some point in their life, they feel as though they're being rejected. And, and we, we can actually come alongside people to listen and work with them. And being with them is part of that. Uh, that understanding and then that sharing. It isn't just about listening though that is important. Um, it is also about the company, the understanding, and then being able to speak to them from our heart. I mean, if, if, our, uh, if live it is, is about heart and soul and mind and strength, then speaking from our heart is also terribly important as well. So I want you to think about where where are the areas that you need to think about in terms of your own discipleship, your own living out of the Christian gospel? 
what are the things that you feel you you're doing okay um god hasn't finished with any of us yet so none of us are perfect in that sense um but but actually uh, there are some areas where we need to do a bit of work where we need to um develop things in our life and in our discipleship to become more rooted uh, in Christ and I wonder if you just like to spend a moment and think about it Tony's going to play some music uh, and I don't know whether you doodle on a piece of paper but if you do then just jot things down or um, think about the things that you need to strengthen in your Christian discipleship Okay, thank you. Thank you. We haven't had many quiet moments in this series, have we? But that's that's one uh, to to think about the things where we there's some work that we need to do. Just going back to that phrase of John Wesley, uh, working out our salvation. Actually, develop if you like developing our discipleship becomes a different sort of phrase, meaning the same sort of thing. So. I want to speak to you about um, the fact that mission is, uh, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I keep on clicking on the wrong thing. Why am I doing that? Okay, let's just go down. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so what is my mission? If our mission is about sharing my faith and uh, uh, serving the community and struggling for justice and caring for creation, if that is our mission as a church or as a denomination, uh, as a, a Christian body, what is my mission? Uh, and I wonder if it's something like this. Of course, it's about sharing. <laughs> so, so that means, I guess, that we've got to be a bit vulnerable. Um, and being vulnerable is, is tricky. And we find it hard. Um, and, uh, but being vulnerable in the presence of God and on behalf of people uh, and with people is, is a place where God can really help us in this. Um, of course, caring. People, people want to know that you care. It's very interesting. I'm doing some reading about the, the, the massive development of the Christian church in the early generations of the church, and you know, up to 100 AD and 200 AD. And actually, the mission of the church uh, was accelerated by the fact that people can understand why it was that Christians cared for others uh, and, and 
that is something that's really important that we we shouldn't miss it in terms of what we do and what we are as a church and of course responding to need uh, responding to people's questions uh, sometimes responding to people's criticisms and it's how we do that we don't we don't need to be aggressive we don't need to be angry uh, we do need sometimes to say well actually it's this uh, uh, responding to racist comments for instance actually challenging that uh, I, I understand it's tricky I understand it's difficult but it, it is possible to do that um, and uh, in, in one environment uh, in which I um, volunteer uh, I have from time to time just to challenge what people are saying and it, it's not easy um, and do that but nevertheless responding to people uh, and of course responding with grace is always really important giving <laughs> yeah about money um, but giving of time and energy uh, giving of ourselves giving of the things that we have um, uh, and, and giving generously too of our finance all of these are important aspects of that discipleship and yes they're to our our church and many of us are worshiping at the central hall but people other people from different places and uh being that sort of generous attitude wherever it is that we are worshiping and being and sustaining i think Sustaining a Christian witness is really important. It, you know, it's, it's no good, oh, today, today, I'll have a Christian witness, right? What about tomorrow and the day after? We, we have to sustain that. And in that, we are sustained by God's Holy Spirit. I mean, that's one of the meanings of... Uh, Jesus teaching about parakletos. It, it means being strengthened when uh, under other situations and other uh, uh, circumstances, we might just fall apart uh, and find things difficult. Not sustaining um, our Christian witness because of God's grace and power in our lives. You know, uh, this is a, a work of art by a Chinese artist. He grew up in a village in northern China and went to an art college in Nanjing. Uh, his name is He Qi, H-E-Q-I, He Qi. -E and you can find his, um, his work online in all kinds of places. Just look at this, The Good Samaritan. Um, he'll find that he all often has people in interesting positions. Notice in the background, you know, the priest um, down at the bottom, the Levi, they go, uh, but it was, the, it was the man who was estranged, the person from the edge of society. He was the one that came and uh, helped the one who was cast down. And there's something about that parable which is a challenge to us in terms of our ongoing discipleship that we we ourselves need to be the ones that care and share and respond that give generously that uh, support and sustain others because that's how god is with us actually that's how God is with us. And the book, the discipleship book, brings us back to the covenant prayer and the importance of that. It starts, as you know, uh, I am no longer my own, but yours. And, and that covenant prayer is, is a profound and important prayer for us. Uh, but it, it 
places our commitment where it belongs. Not with me. I'm no longer my own, but yours, O Lord Jesus, O Lord God, O Holy Spirit. And I want to live it. You know, when Wesley wrote the, when he came across a covenant prayer, he, he adapted it. He, he uh, like many things in his writings, he adapted it from someone else. Uh, and the original prayer was a thousand words long, just more than a thousand words. The one that we use now in our covenant services is just over a hundred words. And, uh, and that sense that the prayer gives of I give everything to you, O Lord, all that I am is yours. Now, let me come out. I know that as a church, you support uh, a number of projects, the, the Passage, the Food Bank, uh, the Night Shelter, the Pregnancy Care, the Gate. Uh, and of course, you give away 50% of your uh, Sunday income to, uh, to charitable giving. Uh, and that's, that's remarkable. That's, that's wonderful. And I know many other churches do something similar. And that's kind of modeling as a community what we need to be doing as individual disciples. Now, I know that there are one or two questions have arisen. Uh, one that we haven't dealt with uh, refers to the creeds. A couple of weeks ago, I referred to the creeds. And one question uh, is, well, why do we often use the Apostles' Creed, which is the shorter creed, rather than the Nicene Creed, which is longer? Well, of course, actually, most denominations do that. I mean, if you go to an Anglican church uh, for evening prayer, it's the Apostles' Creed. They do that every day. It's just when they have the Eucharist, when they have the sacrament, they use the Nicene Creed. So I expect, I don't know, but I expect on Easter Day you'll have the Nicene Creed. So we go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Amen. The thing about our discipleship, it kind of goes on going. Um, now, uh, oh yeah, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being part of this series and turning up. Uh, it's been a joy to see you on, this, on the things. Part of the problem with Zoom, it, I don't get to chat to you over a cup of tea. <laughs> That's what to do, of course. And for taking, oh, my spelling. For taking part and sharing with others in the groups, that, I appreciate that such a lot. I would like to have been in the groups myself. Um, so I pray that God will really bless you richly and surprise you with grace this Easter time.